Good morning, Audrey. How are you today? I'm being attacked by my cat again. I'm wild. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. I've been joining you with these for these lattes with librarians now for quite a while. And today we have a returning guest. You have probably seen her before. This is Audrey. Um, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself, Audrey. Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm the assistant coordinator of youth services. My cat is ampersand. She's very excited today, as you can tell. And I frequently comment as odd on in the comments. So you might know me from there too. <laughs> yes, you're you're a regular viewer and commenter, so we appreciate that. Um, yeah, how are you doing today? Um, well, my cat's been keeping me on my toes <laughs> mostly. <laughs> and it's Good morning, been... Mary. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning. Um, it's been a little hard to wake up. I feel like it's been that way all week. It's been so rainy and gray. Yeah. Yes, the gray, the gray, drizzly weather just makes me want to, makes me want to curl up and go back to sleep in the mornings until you know the sun comes out. And man, I just want to read. I have been like all about the reading this week. I'm read a book and a half, and I'm <laughs> ready to. I just want to finish this this book that I'm reading. Um, I'm reading um, Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. Um, I like her books. And this one is, um, it's very interesting. Like, I, I think I've read all of her books at this point. Um, this one, this woman has like a secret past. Like a, there's a secret from her past that she has hidden like very well. Like no one knows it. And um but people are, someone has come into her life and is threatening to expose her, her past. And she is one of those, she's at the point now where she's trying to decide how far she'll go to keep her secret. Is so, the reader know the secret? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, they share the, the secret with the reader. Um, so you get like flashbacks of her past and her present. So it's very, very interesting. Um, and this is like the second twisty book that I've read this week. Um, earlier, I read Someone We Know by Sherry LaPena. Um, it was one of those, you know, it starts off with a murder, like, boom, that's that's the prologue. So <laughs> you, you know what you're getting with this book. But it's one of those, you know, you're trying to figure out who committed the crime, but you're getting like the points of view from a lot of people who are involved <clears throat> in the investigation, but not um, not like the police, like the people in the neighborhood, because, you know, it's one of the neighbors who got killed. And like everyone in this neighborhood seems to have a secret and no one is telling the truth about anything. And there are lots of lies and like uncovering the truth and getting down to the down through the different layers to figure out what really happened is. Um, no one is telling the truth. Lots of twists and turns. So I like that book. So that was a really good one. If you like twisty, turny, what is really happening books, I would recommend um, Sherry LaPena. That sounds really fun. Yeah. I am super jealous that you've been able to read this week. The last <laughs> couple of weeks have been the start of summer reading. And it's been such a zoo on the children's floor. It's been a delightful zoo. But we yes. went from zero to 60 in terms of people, actually, I think it's more like zero to 80. And yeah. I'm coming home just like, and not able to read at all. I finally finished a book I've been working on off and on for a long time. Um, just this morning, actually, um, it's called A Wish in the Dark by Christina Soontornvat. Probably not saying that name quite right. And it's, it actually won one of last year's Newbery Honor uh, Award. Yeah. And I love it. It's a Thai inspired fantasy and obviously it's a new book, so it's a kid's book, but it's really cool. Um, the premise is that um, 50 some odd years ago or something like that, a, a huge fire devastated half of this big city and the governor showed up out of seemingly nowhere and he can create magic light orb ball things and so that create light and heat. And so no one has to use fire anymore, but he's gone a little power hungry. And the main, ah. yeah. And there's kids who are like born in the jail and are labeled 
prisoner, like criminals themselves, just because they were born in a prison and there's jail breaks and and all this kind of stuff. And it's you know, kids saving the world basically. But of course, because it's going to be kids saving the world. That's just how it. That's what has to happen. Kids will save the world. Exactly. <laughs> all the books tell us. So. <laughs> we need just, to get like politicians out of it and let the kids figure it out. Right. <laughs> it is done a little bit more believably in this one, I think. Um, there's like a big protest march and everything. Like it's really cool. It's well done. Yeah. I like. Yeah, I, like I, I love how books just keep telling us over and over and over again. Kids are going to save the world. Let them figure it out, and we should. That's what we should do. We should just step back and let them figure it out. <laughs> and then, you know, kids try to protest for climate change and gun control and everything, and everyone's like, "Where did they get these ideas?" And I'm like. Books, books, like saying maybe. If anyone out there is reading anything interesting this summer, I would love to hear what you're reading. If you want to drop that in the comments, um, we, we, we can share that. Um, you were talking about summer reading. How is that going? It's going really well. So last year's summer reading was interrupted. You know, I think everyone can just like, like there's always that blip when you look at like st 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 statistics. Oh my God, that word just did not want to come out. When you look at statistics, there's always like that one outlier that you're just like, there's put a little asterisk next to it and be like, we have to explain why this one's so different. Oh, all, the, all we'll have to say is 2020 and everyone will be like, oh yeah, 2020. We <laughs> forget about that one. It doesn't count for anything. No. 2020 explains it all. <laughs> But yeah. By, yeah, by the end of the first week of summer reading this year, we had more signups than we had the entirety of last year. Yeah. So yeah. people are so getting out and doing sure. things again. So that's nice to see. Yes. Yeah. We, we were supposed to have our first in-person story time this Monday at the park and we got rained out. Yeah, that, that's happened with the outdoor story times. I, I don't think you were the only place that got rained out. So... Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't actually know if we got any of our outdoor story times last week. I forgot to follow up with the branches. Um, I know. I think it, one of our branches also has story times on Monday. I think it might be Bremen, and they also got rained out. So, do you know how the plant swap went yesterday, though? It went really well. Um, I talked to Mary. She did the plant swap out at Northwest. She said they had about thirty people come, and they. Lots of plants exchanged. So that was really awesome. Uh, you know, it's nice to see. I think plants kind of became a big thing in 2020. Everyone stuck at home. They wanted a little life around them. And <laughs> we need to do a sourdough starter swap. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the sourdough thing has passed. <laughs> but it would I think now that people are back to work, they've given up on the baking. But um Aww. Well, not everyone. I've heard a couple people are still doing it, but but yeah, um, but yeah, it went really well. A lot of people came out, and that was another event that we were able to do outside to make it safer. Um, so that was that went really well. We've got a couple more events coming up um, later this month, uh, June twenty third, twenty fourth, the Thursday, whatever. Whatever day of the week that is, um, we have a birding program. You know Tara out at the Northwest Branch is a birder. She's a big birder. Um, she's going to be doing a birding program for us via Zoom. Um, people can go to the library website and register for that, and we'll send them the link to the Zoom program. Um, so she'll talk to us about like keeping a log of the birds you see and. It's really interesting being with Tara. Like I was ha had a meeting with her one day and we, it was last year and we met outside in the gazebo and we were talking and there was a very loud bird behind us. And she's like, that's a, and she named what kind of bird it was. She didn't even turn around to look. She knew from, from the noise it was making what kind of bird it was. So I'm always very impressed by her bird knowledge. Um, so, so yeah, she's doing a birding program for us on Zoom. And um, we've got some other craft programs that are that are coming up for teens and adults, and people can pick up the bags at the library. What kind of stuff are you doing on your services? 
Well, today we have a Zoom program. We're doing, that's why I'm wearing my graphics shirt. We're doing a Dogman trivia program for ages 6 to 12 today at 2. I'm a little nervous. I've never done trivia before, but I think I'm ready. I've got I've got it all prepared. So <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, and I have kids signed up for it, which is the most important part. And uh, yeah, we're, we've got that going on. We're doing most of our programming that's not the story times online. We're still recording videos and putting them up on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. And we've got programming bags to go with them as well. We've got one for all of our art programs, one for all of our June programs, and one from all of, for all of our July programs. And we ran out of our art bags last night at Maine. So we might be making more of them. We said they were as supplies last, but I don't think we expected them to be gone 10 days in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might be making more of those. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, they they've been they've been fun and the June and July programs are mostly animal and or creature related like owls and dinosaurs and unicorns and cats I think are the June ones and yeah. Um, I will admit that adults and teen programs, we have strayed from the summer reading theme. It's it's much easier for the youth services group to do dog crafts, whereas adults, there aren't really dog crafts for adults. Well, one or two, but it's much harder to, to stick with the summer reading theme for adults. So we just kind of do whatever we, we want to do. <laughs> we we want to have regardless of what the theme is. So I think we're doing more shelter pets than dogs for, for the, in July. And I think what we're really adding is like the template to make like dog toys. Okay. So I think, I think that's what that idea is. I think that's what I've heard floating around, but it's next uh, month. So I wonder one of the programs we're doing for teens and adults is we're we're giving people the supplies to make dog toys that they can like either keep or donate. So, so yeah, that's one of those things that everyone can do. And it's so it's it's a lot of fun, especially if it is something that you then donate. Mm -hmm. um, we did that before at the library where we gathered the 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 toys. Like they made them at the program, and then we gathered them and donated them to um, the shelter. So that was that was fun. Um, but it's just, it's one of those feel good programs that you like doing. Yeah. Um, next week, we've got a couple different programs going. Next week, um, the Lancaster Pride Group is having some pride events around town at various places. We are one of the, the people who are participating. We've got, um, we're doing a craft that people can stop in and pick up next week. Um, we're making little necklaces and people can choose um they'll have like the the well they'll have the supplies in the bag to make um whatever well most of the pride flags are available um and people can uh choose the one that they like and put it on the necklace um so we'll have that craft happening next week we have also made some buttons for people I have been using the button maker so much this week. I like my arm is like I've got some muscles build up because that takes some pressure <laughs> using that. It does. It does. But I've I have been Harry Potter programs where I've just been doing that for like a whole afternoon. I know what you mean. <laughs> I I think that we need to just one day just be like buttons and people can just come in and make buttons because that is so much fun. Like I don't think people understand the joy that that you that you get when you make a button. I just I don't I don't know. I can't even explain it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's quick and simple and then you have something you can wear. Like yeah. And it's instant fun. gratification. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we've done that, done button making as a program a couple of times. And it's always a lot of fun. I it's interesting to see what people come up with too. Mm -hmm. Um, because we had one where we um people were cutting stuff out of magazines to kind of like make their own designs. And some of some of what people came up with was really, really cool. Um, we're gonna have to do that one again when people are able to get back together. Um <laughs> 
what does that say? You can hear her noble efforts all the way from the back office downstairs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mary was in the back office the other day while I was at the reference desk making the thunk, 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 swivel, thunk, thunk, swivel, thunk. And has been preparing a bunch of, my, my boss, the head of youth services, mm -hmm. has been preparing the, the picture parts of the button making process for a community event, not Pride, another one that's upcoming this summer, and I'm forgetting which one it is, because there's yeah. a few of them that we that we staff through yeah. the summer. And so she's she had a lot of fun finding summer readings and library themed artwork, and so she's been she's been preparing for some button making too. So yes. make sure if you go to one of our events downtown that, that or anywhere in the community that you stop by the library but booth because you might very well be able to make a button. Right? The buttons are the best. Yes. And it's it's nice that we are we're so close to the downtown happening that we're able to participate in like whatever's going on down there. Like that the being part of downtown is it's really nice for us. <laughs> it really is. It makes outdoor story time a little complicated because we don't have a space right there. We have to go yeah. to the park, but we have a good relationship with the park. So so can we ride in the park for that? That's nice. Yes. I like the the that that um yeah, that's the one bad thing. All of the branches have a nice outdoor green space where they can have their outdoor story times, but yeah, being part of downtown, we, we don't have outdoor space. We've got that one little patch of grass with a tree on the side of the building. And I've seen you take advantage of it. You'll, you'll go out there and read under the tree at, on your lunch hour. But other than that one little space where there's room for one, maybe two people, we don't have any yeah. outdoor space. I found that last summer because I had been eating my lunch at the fountain. Mm -hmm. downtown, and I'm like, no, there's people. I can't. I need private space out time to eat. So <laughs> but I don't actually want to eat in my car where it's really hot in the middle of summer. So yeah, I, I found the tree. <laughs> the <laughs> tree. <laughs> A patch of grass that belongs to the library. I found it last year. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I saw you there the other day reading your book and I was just like, oh, that looks really nice. I always, I always end up going home for lunch because my dog likes to be able to go outside. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't have quite enough time for that. So it's interesting, if you don't mind my dragging the conversation back to books, that you mentioned Pride because I, I did pick up a bit of Pride reading. Okay. And, um, uh, I did order it from the consortium, but I'm pretty sure Mary said that she had ordered it for our teen collection. It's called No Way They Were Gay. Hidden Lives and Secret Loves, and it's by Lee Wind. Mm -hmm. And the premise of this is that, you know, history is written by the people in power. And I was a history major in college, so this wasn't exactly news to me. And <laughs> consequently, um, people write what, first of all, people see what they expect to see. But mm -hmm. when people are writing history, they write it the way they want it to be, like with yeah. their own Yep, Mary's confirming we'll have it our own copy soon. So with with like their own slant or promoting their own morals or the way they think the world ought to run. And so uh, LGBTQIA plus histories are often erased from it. And so he went out of his way to try to find a bunch of primary source documents about a lot of famous historical figures. Um, mm -hmm. And he posits that a lot of them might have been not straight and or gender non-conforming in their own way. And it's interesting. Some of them come from non-Western cultures, which is a nice bit of inclusion, but also like, I mean, gay is a relatively recent term in history. So like you wouldn't yeah. necessarily use it for somebody who lived like forever ago because right, right. The culture was different. But yeah, um, so far it's been pretty interesting. Like he's talked about Abraham Lincoln. He's talked about Mahatma Gandhi. He's talked about I'm blanking um, Bayard Rustin, who worked with Martin Luther King Jr. And he was an out and proud uh, gay man. So we knew we know that guy for a fact. Um, but he was often, uh, that part of his history is often not shared. And like his major yeah. contributions to the civil rights movements often. Yeah, Eleanor Roosevelt's in there too. Um, yeah. 
as as the library has stated, she's also included in the book. So yeah, there's lots of cool people. I've only gotten through the first of three sections, so. And it is one of those where some of them they don't know because right. some of the, like there are things that are said that maybe they there was an inside joke, you know, that they were sharing <laughs> or um, some of the things that, that they did, like I know like with the, you mentioned Abraham Lincoln, one of the things like, you know, they talk about him sharing a bed with this other man. Well, back then there was no heat, you know, there weren't extra beds to go around. Sharing the bed was just something that you did. Like that wasn't, that wasn't unusual, especially like that just, that just was the fact of life back then. There, you know, you, there wasn't a motel, a motel eight around the corner. So, so as the book pointed out in that instance, what was unusual about it was that he shared the bed with the guy for four years after his law career took off. And he'd actually found the guy in the process of trying to buy a bed. And mm -hmm. the guy was like, well, why don't you just stay with me instead? And yeah. when that guy moved away, Lincoln sunk into his first major depressive episode. So it's just interesting, which could happen because his best friend moved away too. So yeah. like, yeah. but that's kind of how the book's put together too, is like he shows the primary source documents, he shows the arguments for maybe why, but then he doesn't say, and this is why for sure. He says, what do you think? Yeah. Which I think is an interesting way to close out the chapter. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that like that Lincoln one, there's been like, speculation about that one for years but like no no one knows for sure so right so yeah it's interesting where's Eleanor Roosevelt we know that one we know <laughs> pretty pretty well established um but again it's not something that they ever tell kids in school right yeah so it's one of those things that like you just kind of stumble upon one day because you, you really you don't learn that it's not part of the history textbooks um and it's one of those things that is just it it was partially hidden but not not completely because i don't know um but speaking of pride books um we as part of the the pride events that are happening next week um we did put together um several different bookmarks with lists of books um that we have in our collection at the library so if you're looking for something, um, we've got a couple displays up and um, on those displays, there are bookmarks so you can um, find more resources throughout the library. We've got, um, we've got a lot, we've got a decent collection for, for people. And I will confess, we don't have a pride display in the main children's department, but we do have a lot of really great pride books. So if you're, um, so if you come to the children's floor and you're looking for that kind of thing, do not feel shy about asking. We have loads of stuff up there that's really good. So you'll free to come you up have there. so many summer reading decorations yeah. up. You just don't have room for one more display. We really don't. That that was kind of it. I was even thinking the other day. It's like I would like to have a pride display. I just don't know where I'd put it. Right. Yeah. It's one of those uh, lots of lots of uh, decorations up on the second floor as always every summer that that floor takes on a complete transformation and just becomes like a, a whole new world and it's it's one of those you never know what you're going to find from summer to summer up there on that second floor and it's amazing the the decorations you're able to make with just like paper and paint or you know streamers and lanterns like you've turned that into such a beautiful beautiful area up there. I took advantage of the plexiglass barriers that we have um, up on the, in, on our public desks um, for a little bit of protection. Um, we still have those plastic ba plexiglass barriers up. So I've turned our desks into aquariums. <laughs> You're living in a fishbowl. You may as well celebrate it. Right? Yes. And to give credit where it's due, I did not do the bulk of the decorating. Um, like the the big whale, my boss did that. Shannon did that. Um, she's an amazing artist. So credit where credit's due. Shannon did that. My coworkers did the jellyfish and the fish and the crabs. And did all Shannon did the shark? Shannon did the shark by our book drop. All I did was so cute right now. It's like you feed the shark because you're returning your books. 
<laughs> I love the shark. The shark makes me really happy. Yes, the only thing I made was the octopuses. I like those. <laughs> My favorite are the crabs. I have to say they're all great, but I, I love yeah. Cindy made a couple little crabs and I think they're the best. I think the crabs are the best too. Those, I was like, oh my God, those crabs are adorable when I went up there. So yeah, the crabs are the best. And as the library points out, we do have some very creative people in our youth services department. So yes, yes, it's always great to see what you you managed to put together for us up there. The paper lanterns were a good find. I have to say, you can do a lot with paper lanterns. I had no idea. It never even occurred to me that you could use those that way. Like it just, I saw that and I was like, Oh my God, that's genius. It just, oh, and Carrie says she hopes to see some pictures. That would be really great. You need to take pictures of your decorations and post them on Facebook. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I will talk to Shannon about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, that's a good idea. Hey, come see us kind of thing. <laughs> Especially on like a, 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 a rainy summer day, the library is a great place to go. Of which we've had very many. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has been a very busy week at the library. There's nothing else to do on rainy summer day. It's been so rainy. So rainy. So much rain. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's, there's best, definitely been an uptick in traffic at the library. And people are coming in and they're very happy to, to see us again. And it's surprising to me, like, the number of people who are still calling to ask if we're open. Because um, they just word hadn't gotten out that we that we were open and we've been open for a few months now so it's nice to to see traffic picking up and people coming back in and especially at this in summertime when all the kids are very excited to be there yes so. yes no it, it is very exciting to have everybody coming back and yay. it's <laughs> it's great um we had overflow graphic novels for basically forever because it's kind of like a browsing collection. You know, you come up and, and what really catches your eye are the are the graphics. And we can finally, we don't need an overflow cart for our graphic novels anymore. They are officially all sitting on the shelf again. I was panicking a little. I was like, but I thought they loved them. Have I been over ordering my favorite collection just because I'm blind? But no, they're gone. So it's okay. <laughs> It's one of those things like the library really doesn't have room for all of our books. Like we count on a certain percentage of our collection being checked out at all times. And last year when it wasn't, we didn't have enough room on our shelves for all of the books because um, they're just, they just weren't being checked out in the numbers that we're used to. So it was, it's really startling to see just how big the collection is Mm -hmm. Because you normally don't see it all at the same time because, you know, 30% of it is out at any given point at least. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very funny to, to deal with those full, full shelves. And then once people start coming back in, it's like, they're not full anymore. <laughs> right. And with the kids stuff, I think it's usually the parents who are putting things on hold. And I don't know that it necessarily occurs to parents to put dog man on hold for their kids. Exactly. And we have so many copies of all of the dog man books. Because so. that's what kids gravitate towards. Yeah. They, they, they pick the stuff that they know and they're familiar with. So it's like, you need lots of copies of that. And now they're gone. But for a long yes. time, we had lots. <laughs> <laughs> Shelves of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It's all, but it's going back to normal now. Yeah, so it's, it's 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 really great to see that to see things going back to normal. It's it's a good feeling to, to see people using the library again. So that's all. That's always a great feeling. And like the program yesterday, where we had thirty people turn out for a plant swap. That that's one of those things that you just. It just makes you smile when you're a librarian knowing that, oh, yes, <laughs> people are like our programs. <laughs> yes. And we were, we handed out our first halfway prizes. We have prizes at the very end of our summer reading for the kids, but also in the middle. And we handed out our very first halfway prizes yesterday. We did have some other kids come in, but we didn't have our prize cart set up yet because, man, those guys went fast. Um, right. Yes. So um, we handed out our first halfway prizes, I think, yesterday or possibly the day before. I'm still working on getting my sense of time back. And um, <laughs> cause that's another thing that just ran away. During oh, yeah, 2020 time didn't matter. 
uh, and it's slow coming back. Um, so that was another return to normalcy, being able to hand out some summer reading prizes. And that was great. That was really nice. For adults and teens, we only, we're only doing a final prize. And we've already had people picking those up. I finally was getting them out to the branches this week. And um, yeah, it was, it was a little surprising how quickly people finished. So some people came in for them already and we had to tell them, oh, come back next week. We'll have them out. But yeah, we're getting those, those out everywhere. So That's every, nice. be able, should be able to get them everywhere by next week. It'll be no problem. <laughs> I do know I have been handing out a lot of adult summer reading logs. Almost every parent, every time I've passed out a kid log, I've been passing out a, a, an adult log too. Most parents seem very keen to do it with their kids this year. So that's been, that's been really yeah. nice. So. We have a lot, a lot of years where um, like the parents are like, I don't know, I don't have time to read, but they, they do seem more interested in it this year. So that's good. Yes, I've tried to do this in the past, but this year it's been more than usual. It's been taking off. So yeah. I think people are reclaiming their free time a little bit more. So maybe yeah. that's a good thing that 2020 did is, is help us reclaim that a little bit, perhaps. Yeah. And maybe just all of the options aren't quite open to people yet. So maybe they still just have more time on their hands to, to do those things that they enjoy, like read. So. I've also been stressing that audiobooks count, and I know that that has snared at least a couple of people because I yeah. don't think realized that before. I love audiobooks. I, I tell you, I am much more likely to finish a book if it's an audio. It, there's something about an audiobook that just sucks me in. That's my preferred way of consuming consuming books. That's fair. My focus is still a little bit shot, which is part of the reason why it's taking me so long to finish stuff. It's not that I don't want to read, it's that I keep getting distracted by other books. <laughs> the books that I've been finishing the fastest are the graphic novels because I just can finish them in one sitting. So mm -hmm. it's not that I'm only reading graphic novels, it's just they're the ones I can get through quickest. So yeah, that's what I've been telling everybody. Audiobooks, graphic novels, kids and reading yeah. books. Yep, yeah, they all count. All reading is good reading. Absolutely. Yes. Well, that's probably a great place to end today. All reading is good reading. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today, Audrey. It's been really lovely talking to you. My pleasure. And Carrie says, same. I wonder if that's the uh, audiobooks or the graphic novels. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just wonder. <laughs> Uh, yes, so it's been really great talking to you this morning, and um, Allison should be back next week. Um, no, she will be back next week, not should, she will be back next week. So we'll be back next week, next Friday, 10.30, and see you there. Oh, she, she said graphic novels. Carrie's reading the graphic novels. <laughs> graphic novels. Oh, those are the best. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. See you next Bye. week. You know what? I always forget how to, to end this. There we go. I found it. Bye. <laughs>